prayer in your cabin. Read those books in a blink. Oh yeah. Grab yourself a hot drink because you're watching how to train your Gavin. Yep, that's me. Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. So one of the main questions that I got after I posted my 2021 reading and channel goals, and I mentioned that I read 210 books in 2020, the main question I got was, how did you read so much? <laughs> so I thought I would briefly talk about how I read over 200 books in one year, and I will preface this by saying 2020 was a bit of a strange year. I don't know if I'm going to end up carrying that energy over into 2021. However, I do feel like I have some things or like some tips and tricks that might help even during a normal year so that it can help you to read more books in one year. I do also want to say it doesn't matter how much or how little you read in one year, it doesn't make or break a reader, just read at your own pace and that might just be the best thing for you. I do want to clarify as well that in that 2021 reading and channel goals video that I mentioned I read 31 books in August and it was way too much for me personally. So I do also want to say that during the entire year of 2020, I had to try and figure out what worked for me and what didn't work for me. And what didn't work for me was reading 31 books in one month. And I feel like a lot of these tips you might already know, but I do want to just say what personally worked for me in 2020. So I will start off by saying one of the main reasons why I read so much in 2020 was because I kept changing up the format of what I was reading. So in 2019 and beforehand, I would only ever read physical books. I could not read on an e-reader, it would dry my eyes out, and I never listened to audiobooks. And then at the very end of 2019, I listened to my first ever audiobook and my life was changed. So by changing up the format in 2020, I went from reading 124 books in 2019 to 210 books in 2020. Saying that though, I did mainly read physical books still in 2020. I didn't listen to more audiobooks than physical books. I think 70% of what I read was physical still, and that is still how I read. That is still my preference of reading, but by changing it up to an audiobook every now and then helped, changing it to an ebook as well because I got a, a new Kindle. It's a Kindle Paperwhite so it didn't hurt my eyes as I was reading so that really helped as well and even just kind of doing an audiobook and a physical book together or an audiobook and an ebook together that would help me as well because one of my main problems is attention span. I would end up like if I'm reading physically sometimes I'll finish a chapter I'll scroll through my phone and then I'll go back to reading a chapter then once I've finished that chapter I'll scroll roll through my phone and I'm still having problems with doing that even now and my mind goes like 500 different places at once so as I'm in the middle of reading I might start thinking about something else so I kind of need sometimes two things going at once so whether that's an audiobook and a physical or an audiobook and an ebook it really does help me to pay attention. And there's just something about changing it up and making it feel a bit more fresh every single time that you're reading a book. So changing the format I think really does help. I have got Libby so that I don't really have to pay for audiobooks like I used to. I do have Audible and I get my credit a month and I'm very picky with what I choose with that now and I do have script as well so I try and look for like free audiobooks so that I can listen to as I'm reading or if I'm just listening to the audiobook on its own and then I try to pay attention to that as well. Another one that I'm always pushing and that is to read more middle grade or at least try and pick up a middle grade book every now and then because I feel like changing the age group, the demographic for these books, you do see a change throughout you know middle grade, young adult and adult. You see that change between them and again it kind of reinvigorates your reading. I feel like middle grade is such a fantastic palate cleanser because they they are so fun, so entertaining. A lot of them are hard hitting still, but they are told again in a way that I feel like is so universal that it isn't as heavy or as hard to get through sometimes as an adult book. So reading middle grade every now and then, not just middle grade, but children's books, picture books, graphic novels even, graphic novels really helps. It does help you to feel like you are achieving more books read because when you read a middle grade book, for me personally, it can take like four hours to read it. And that makes me feel powerful. And it feels like I can tackle another book straight after it. When you feel like you're being fast with reading, that's when you want to read more. So 
when you're reading, say, an adult book and it's taken you five weeks to read it, sometimes just picking up a middle grade book so that you can read in a few hours really does make you feel like you've achieved something. Middle grade might not be for everyone, children's books might not be for everyone, but maybe just find something that is within the the genre that you enjoy the most and you will most likely find something and it might end up changing your life. You might end up finding that you absolutely love middle grade so, so much. And I do have a guide to read in middle grade as an adult kind of thing that I did last year. So I will link that in the description box if you want to check that out. But honestly, middle grade books are lifesavers. They're so well written, they're incredible, people are missing out. If you don't read middle grade you're missing out but I'm not trying to push middle grade on anyone. If you don't want to read middle grade then honestly you do not have to. I just think that it's just such a great palate cleanser and you can get through them more quickly than you can a young adult and an adult book. So yeah changing the age group but also again kind of going back to the format going from like a novel to a graphic novel again like try and pick up some more graphic novels i never used to read graphic novels before 2020 i think the only ones i ever read were the heartstopper series by alice osman and that was about it now like again in 2020 i discovered how much i love them and you can go through one of them in literally an hour or less like i read the tea dragon society in like 10 minutes and it was incredible it was such i mean it was a fantastic read anyway but the fact that again that i could get through it so quickly made me feel like i could tackle another book reading you know just words on a page to reading something that's illustrated it really does make a huge difference and not even just for graphic novels but a lot of middle grade books are illustrated too again not trying to push it on anyone but you do get that change that it just keeps on making it feel more fresh which I feel like I've said so many times in this video but yeah just keep changing it up and it will then become way more enjoyable for you because I don't know if you're like me sometimes I do get really bored when I'm tasting the same kind of thing so I like to change it up every now and then just to make it feel new so yeah just give that one a try <laughs> time again is such a huge issue sometimes with reading because you do have to set aside a certain amount of time to actually read and I know that because I started to listen to audiobooks in 2020 I realized that I can and listen to audiobooks when I'm doing mindless things but sometimes I might not be paying attention and then I'll have to go back a chapter so that I can re-listen to it because I missed something. So now I try and set aside time for even audiobooks if I feel like I'm going to get lost. Set aside a certain amount of time. I downloaded the Forest app in 2020 and that really helped me to stop picking up my phone. Uh, it didn't completely eliminate my issue with, you know, my attention going elsewhere, but it did help me set aside certain amounts of time for me to actually read. 2020 was a weird year because I did end up getting way more time on my hands than I usually do due to furlough, and that really did help. And again, I know that's not going to help everybody, and it might not help me in a year's time or whatever, but it's still something that made me reflect on how I spend my time. So another thing that really helps with reading more is sometimes, and it might not work for everyone, but reading sprints. Maybe just doing it with friends or there are a lot of booktubers on booktube who do do reading sprints and you can kind of interact with them and then set aside a time like 30 minutes at a time to read or like read sprint which honestly it has helped me in the past as well and I know it helps a lot of people so maybe give one a try try them out just knowing that you have to read for a certain amount of time it kind of does help I know sometimes it can be a bit pressure because like okay I have to have to read it but sometimes we need that gentle push to actually do it because again my attention span can be so bad that I do need to have that structure. So try and structure your time, try and set aside time aside to actually read. And I'm probably saying tips and tricks that loads of people have already said in their videos, but again, I'm just saying what helped me. Another one is, is to make completing a book fun or kind of make it feel like more of an achievement than it probably is for you usually. I mean, finishing a book is an achievement in itself. However, what I love to do because I have a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet I have is an amalgamation of Jay's from Book Roast's Copile spreadsheet with Ali from Harbour Quarters spreadsheet as well. I will link both in the description box. And what I do is I cannot wait to fill it in. Like I love filling things in. I love filling spreadsheets in. I love filling forms in or, you know, just crazy stuff like that. I don't know why, but I feel like I get some sort of serotonin boost whenever I like tick something off 
or whether I fill something in. So I feel like just having some kind of spreadsheet or bullet journal or a list, it doesn't even have to be fancy, just a list, and being able to fill that in or being able to tick that off can really be helpful. So when I read a book now, I when I think about when I read a book, the first thing I think of now is I cannot wait to see what my co-pile rating is of this book. And again, if you don't know what co-pile is, I will link Jay's video in the description box. I've mentioned it quite a lot on my channel. It's how I rate my books and it is, yeah, I'm not going to explain it again, <laughs> but it does help make rating a book feel fresh. And sometimes being able to read a book, even on Goodreads too, just being able to see your book's completed list go higher and higher and seeing your reading challenge get more and more full, then that is a really helpful way of trying to get you to read a bit more. So yeah, I am a little bit sad and I am a bit of a, a spreadsheet whore. And I do absolutely love it when I can fill in the, the book on the spreadsheet and I'm like, the title, the author, what I gave it in core pile, and you know, things like that. It just, that really does make me happy. So find things that really makes you happy when you finish a book. It can be anything, it can be writing the list down, it can be rating it, it can be doing whatever, but trying to make it fun for you is another great way of trying to read a bit more. But the number one thing that helped me read more in 2020 was when I started to feel overwhelmed, when I felt like I wasn't reading for the fun of it, I took a break. And one thing that I found after reading 31 books in August was that my reading went right down in September and it felt great. I just took a step back and I was like, you know what? I turned reading into a bit of a chore. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a break from that now and put myself first. Like honestly, that is always the number one thing about doing anything that you enjoy is when you start to feel like you're not enjoying it anymore, take a step back, do other things. So what I found really helpful was because I have a lot of other creative things that I love to do, whether it's making videos or whether it's writing or even playing video games. I absolutely love doing that too. Just like, yeah, just take a, a step away from the books and go on to something else. What you do not want to do is to read yourself into the ground. And when I started to see myself do that, that's when I retreated. And it honestly, it helped so much. So again, put your mental health first and don't force yourself to read those books because then you'll just end up despising it. You'll hate having to read the books. And then you could end up not liking a book that you probably otherwise would have loved because you are not in the headspace for it. You are not in the mood for it. So just make sure that when you're sitting down to read, you think, is this really what's best for me right now? Then proceed, read and enjoy what you read. But if not, it is honestly, honestly okay to go a day a week, a month, a year without reading at all, if that is what is best for you. So make sure you do that. That is number one. That is something that I am carrying over into 2021 because it was the most helpful thing for me in 2020. I guess another reason why I loved reading so much in 2020 was because I was doing a lot of book clubs as well and some of them I really, really enjoyed. It did help push me into reading certain books that were on my TBR and it made me read books that I probably wouldn't have picked up up otherwise because I have like a million books that I want to read first but it is really handy to mix it up every now and then to read a book you probably wouldn't have picked up but you should and doing it for book clubs and having other people to talk to about these books is so helpful and I have found so many amazing book clubs on YouTube and as well on Twitter as well when I see people hyping up books and then we can have a conversation about those books even bookstagram too just kind of talk to other people about those books really does help help. I also started a TBR game in July and I feel like that kind of <laughs> helped as well because it made picking the books more fun. So if you possibly can, then the books that you have on your TBR, if you want to change it up, if you want to spice it up a little bit more, then maybe do some kind of fun game to pick those books. There are so many TBR games on YouTube that you can watch and it might be helpful. Maybe not. It's not something you absolutely have to do. But just making it fun, again, even to just pick the book and make it fun can really help you because then you're thinking ahead because I know now every single month I'm so excited to see what will end up on my TBR because I don't know in advance. I mean, unless it's books I have to read for book clubs and read-alongs, but other than that, I have no idea what's going to be on my TBR and that makes me so excited to find out. And again, it's kind of like when I fill in the spreadsheet to find out what my core pile rating is. 
it just makes it so much more fun and I am entertained by it. I am entertained by it and I seem to enjoy it more when I'm entertained. So, I mean, it's the same with any book I read. If I'm entertained, then I will end up loving it. So I guess, I mean, this was probably a bit of a messy video because I didn't really have these written down properly. I had like a little bullet point thing, but I didn't really have any kind of structure to this. So I apologize for that. But those are pretty much my tips and tricks. I mean, you probably didn't learn anything new, but those were the things that I did last year that really helped me to read. 210 books and no regrets. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you took something from it anyway. Even if you didn't learn anything new, maybe it's helped you to think of things in a different way. Maybe different. I don't know. I don't know. I'm giving myself too much credit here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments any tips and tricks that you have for reading more and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye!